Virtual reality is a game changer. It's an expensive, occasionally nauseating game changer that requires you to set aside a large square of space in your home, but it's still a game changer. Well, very unlikely to replace traditional gaming, VR gaming is an extraordinary experience and one that I highly, highly recommend. But in saying that, there's some stuff that we found while playing it this week that you guys are probably gonna wanna know in advance. So here's our PSVR PSA. Now, more often than not, virtual reality is a solo experience. Sure, you've got games like Rigs that throw you in with other people also wearing VR headsets, but more often than not, VR is really a one-person activity. Or at least it should be. What it actually is, is, as Dan has put it, a logistical nightmare. A phrase I'm reminded of every time I follow the system instruction to put on my headset and then blindly and helplessly feel around for my headphones and controllers. A feat I consistently fail at which causes the closest possible person to yell, stop, I will do it for you, stop moving, you're making it worse. And I sure hope you trust whoever you get to help you because chances are extremely high that you're going to do something embarrassing while in VR. If you do manage to get yourself into the contraption and not tied up in wires, well done, you're on to the next challenge, not smashing into the sofa slash coffee table. One of the wonderful things about VR is how immersive it is. You'll actually feel like you're in the back cave or riding down a hellish roller coaster. You'll believe you can lean on that table that isn't there and you'll trust that there is three feet of clear space in front of you for you to fling out a batarang, when really your TV screen is right in front of you and you've just caused a thousand bucks of damage. So you've managed to put your headset on after clearing enough space and now you're falling deep down the rabbit hole. Before too long you've lost count of how long you've been playing. Well, the best reminder is to whip off that headset and deal with what we've dubbed a VR hangover. From what we've experienced, the longer you're under, the harder it is to readapt to the real world. After I completed Batman VR, for example, I sat at my desk and my brain was telling me that everything around me was moving back and forth ever so slightly. It's enough to make standing immediately after a pipe dream. While well, we're on the subject of standing, when was the last time you stood to play a video game? I'm gonna bet it was when you first played Wii Sports until you realized you could just as easily get that strike while sitting comfortably on your couch. Never, Dan. I never stand unless it's absolutely required of me. Turns out standing in the same place for long periods of time is really, really hard. Doubly so if you believe you're in a metal cage slowly descending into the dark depths of the ocean. That's why we generally recommend sitting down to play even if it does make Batman look like he's impersonating a T-Rex. Not everybody in the world has trouble with high intensity rides and not everybody has problems with motion sickness. But for those of you who do, you might want to be careful with how much you take on in VR. Even if you aren't moving around a lot in game, the constant twisting and turning of your head can produce some unpleasant results. Also, if you want to prank your friends, I'm told that moving the PlayStation camera while they're in VR is a truly sickening experience. Fun for you, less fun for them. Can confirm, it is the worst. Worst still is horror in VR. This might be your cup of tea, but I really can't stress enough What's how that? much playing horror games like Resident Evil and Here They Lie in VR oh. really is a waking nightmare. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> if you're a daredevil sword who loves a good adrenaline rush, this will be right up your alley. Otherwise, you might be more of a Dan. PlayStation VR already has a very hefty price tag for entry, so you want to make sure you're getting the best games or experiences. You're going to be hearing that experiences descriptor a lot in reference to VR, as a lot of the times these games don't necessarily have what you'd see as traditional gameplay in them. Take Batman Arkham VR for example. I love the Arkham games for one thing, their mechanics. I've always said give me that fighting system with wire models only and I'd play it just as much. Even without the combat though, Batman VR reminded me that Rocksteady understands what it means to be Batman. Arkham VR's mechanics can be summarized thusly. Reach forward with your phantom gauntlets until you can pick something up, occasionally throw a batarang, and scan stuff with your bat torch. But of all the experiences I've played so far, it would be the one I'd recommend you get straight away. The one I'd recommend you never get is Here They Lie, because it's truly, truly the worst. Where is it? Oh, Jesus Christ! I'd definitely back up that Batman VR recommendation, but it's also worth trying out some of the more obscure demo titles too, so you can hop into the shoes or the weird disembodied hands of a gangster or a scuba diver. It's a more surreal and engaging experience, and I think it can be articulated without trying it for yourself. Oh my god! 
So you might not want to drop several hundred dollars on PlayStation VR on the gamble that this might be your thing, but if one of your friends has got one, I'd highly recommend going around to their house and seeing if it is for you.